Happy Monday, everybody, or whatever day you're watching this video. We are going to talk about some budget decks to help you climb the ladder through the next couple of days. And listen, we just hit July 1st, so in less than 23 days, we will be playing the new Perils and Paradise cards. And also, don't forget, I'm going to post it in the description. We do have a giveaway going for a bundle. Get me to 2,000 subs and we will make it a mega bundle. Um, let's go over some of the things right now. There's going to be some changes coming up soon. There was a really, really quickly um, a small update that happened. I think they changed Reno and like two other cards. I don't think it's going to make any bit of difference whatsoever on any win rates that we will be talking about um, because a lot of decks with Reno in it is very expensive. And we're talking about budget decks here. I'm going to get you decks that will get you above 50% win rates, bronze through gold, maybe even further than that. Yes, absolutely further than that. And then obviously, they'll be less than 5,000 dust. Let's go into win rates. Win rates right now are Paladin, Druid, Hunter, Demon Hunter, Warlock. We have five classes that are above 50%, and Death Knight is just right, right there. Remember, this is overall win rates. This is a very small sample size for everybody just in hsreplay.net that has their stats tracking, so don't think that this is the be-all, end-all. And look at the bottom tier, Rogue, Priest, and Shaman. Priest is not doing that great. I'm not upset about it whatsoever. Um, I, there is some a couple of decks that work, but they're just way, way too expensive. And yeah, I, I love the fact that Demon Hunter's back up on top. Well, top four, if you will. You know, Demon Hunter got beat up for the past couple of months. It really doesn't have a an active, um, you know, archetype besides like the shopper site thing. Um, I believe we had one where there was some aggro Demon Hunter, but it didn't last long. So, okay, we're going to talk about some of the classes. Look at this. I wanted to just bring this up. This is the last seven days, bronze through gold. Look at how many decks are tier one. Yes, it's four classes, but I think that's a good thing that there's four classes that have tier one decks that you can play. And then tier two is we're going through. We got Warlock, Hunter, uh, Death Knight in here, Warrior, um, another Warlock, Priest. There's there's so much for us to be able to play with. It's really, really cool. Um, not like it, you know, we have some metas where it's like, okay, there's two decks up here and that's it. If you're not playing this class or this class, you're not winning any games. So I'm, I'm very thankful that it's very diverse like this and there's a lot of opportunities besides just like, okay, we're going to play two decks and that is it. All right. You have 23 days before the new expansion. I am very, very shocked because I've been doing these budget videos for months now. Um, every week on Monday, I'll throw out a, a budget deck video and how consistent I've seen this deck. It's just incredible. First of all, we're talking about Unholy Death Knight, and I just wanted to bring it up one more time because it's still consistently above 50 percent it's still zero cost i mean these cards should be everything that you get for free you shouldn't have to spend any dust on this unless you want to make it stronger or what have you the options here are amazing okay this is zero dust with a 51.6 percent win rate and look i mean this is only showing you know the past month or so but just look at the consistency look at the consistency here yes it looks a little bit low here but there's crazy metas there but it's still 44 percent, and that's not specific to all the, the the ranges of the rank ladder so we know this deck we've talked about it before 51.6 percent win rate the only thing it's really having a problem with is Paladin, understandable, uh, with other Death Knights because there is stronger Death Knights out here. Remember, we're talking about budget decks, not decks that will get you from Bronze all the way to Legend. And then, listen, Warlock kicks its butt a little bit. Warrior kicks his butt a little bit in certain situations, not as crazy, but the rest of the classes it does very well against. And Unholy Death Knight is exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to use Unholy Spells to beat your opponent up. Body Bagger, we know what Body Bagger does, gains a corpse. We want to go ahead and gain corpses here. Mermaid, Reborn, Sticky, stays on one more time. Plagued Grain, you gain those corpses and then you shuffle those, um, you know, crates into the deck that create a 2-2. Two -two. Um, skeletal Sidekick, we know what that does as well. Battlefield Necromancer, you want to go ahead and have corpses so you can have that taunt um, raising 
you, you want this one. This one's very strong. Cult Neophyte. Your opponent's spells cost one more next turn. Don't play it immediately. Play it when you know that your opponent has something nutty that's probably going to go off soon. And then play it there. Uh, Necrotic Mortician. If a friendly undead died after your last turn, discover an unholy rune card. You'll want that. Those are really good because you're discovering. You get three options and you could be something you don't have in your deck anti-magic shell give your minions plus one plus one and elusive it'll stop most of the direct things um direct spell damage if you will won't affect aoe but listen you're going to be messing around with a lot of cards here so I mean, a lot of minions on board you'll be able to give them plus one plus one chill fallen is an amazing card you know a battle cry and death rattle is draw a card you have grave strength this is where the the, the money is here give your minions plus one attack spend th three five corpses to give them three instead so you'll make them very strong so this is kind of a little bit like a flood if you will um, army of the dead raise up to five corpses is two two risen ghouls with rush so that grave strength that could be some damage whatever your opponent has on board corpse bride is great because you'll spend up to 10 corpses you will get corpses in this game so you'll be able to create a risen groom with taunt um with you know 10 10 if you're able to you know kill those 10 corpses talion ford ring goes ahead and brings out some of your bigger minions which is no muncher this one's huge um at the end of your turn attack the low health enemy this with maybe the grave strength this with maybe anti-magic shell it's pretty cool stitch giant as well already coming out of the gate as an 8 8 and if you're getting all of these corpses that you're spending throughout the game these should be super super cheap for you um you can mulligan these um keep them in your hand the first round and this would be fine. I normally wouldn't say that, you know, anything above five mana, I usually try to say. If there's not a specific way of reducing that mana, I don't put it in my hand. I'll normally mulligan it out. But Stitch Giants in certain situations, I'm absolutely going to play this. Okay, and then the Scourge. Fill your board with random undead. It doesn't matter what's on there. It matters what you're going to do. Hopefully some of them will be sticky. Hopefully some of them are more busted than others. And you'll be able to do some fun stuff with that. Again, this deck is easy to play. It's unholy, so you'll need to work on unholy spells. You can tech some things out here and there. If you decide, this is a good starter deck because it costs nothing. So you can, as you start gaining gold to buy packs and what have you, you know, more of the Death Knight cards you can add to this. So it's a it's a good thing. This will not take you super far. I mean, this is going to get you bronze through gold. And then you're going to want to consider, you know, having a situation where you start playing other cards, teching out or what have you. Like, look, I'll show you Diamond to Legend. Legend, it goes to 27%. So you're not going to get super, super far with this, but you'll get enough till we get experience. You'll start getting some wins. You start getting some gold, hitting those quests for the week. Um, this is a good deck for you to play around with, and it's not going to cost you anything. The other conversation we're going to have right now, and it's super interesting here is we we rarely have this, and I've mentioned it before. If you've been following me for any point in time, I've talked about this. The amount of excellence in this uh, Paladin um, archetype for the past couple of months now has been amazing. Um, you know, six months ago, you could not find a deck that's going to get you higher than, you know, bronze for anything less than 10,000. I mean, some of the Hunter ones were like 23,000 uh, to going higher than this. But Handbuff can stand on its own consistently for a long period of time. You saw what we saw before. Paladin's winning games. It's it's number one or number two consistently across the board. And for you having a deck that can get you such a high win rate, 57.3% for 720 dust that has the potential to be expanded upon as you get more cards. This is, this is really a budget player's dream right now. It's something really cool to think about. Okay, so let's go through it real quick. Air Guitarist, you know what it's going to do. It's going to give your weapon plus one durability. You're going to want to give your weapon as much durability as possible because it's a really, really cool busted weapon. This is hand buff. So what is it doing? It's buffing the cards in your hand to make them big and beefy. Righteous Protector, you could do multiple things with this. You could put it up now for early board presence to keep your opponent from smacking you in the face. Um, 
and then also you can work on the whole hand buff thing to make it stronger scarab keychain discover a two cost card you're doing this to put stuff on board remember that okay south sea deck hand has charge while you have a weapon equipped wait to use this until you have the weapon equipped and also keep it in your hand to do hand buff things and then you'll be able to do really really strong hits against your opponent's face gold panner you know what this is going to do card draw card draw you can make it stronger so it can stay on board longer just remember don't give yourself any more than 10 cards i wouldn't put both of these out at once um, especially if you're saving some cards to be hand buffing you're going to run into a problem grime street we know what Grime Street does. It's going to give all minions in your hand plus one plus one. It's awesome. Instrument tech. This is your weapon draw. This is what you do if you do not have the weapon. Uh, Shroomscavate. Give a minion divine shield and excavate a treasure. Who wouldn't want the excavation? Um, that's not really the main purpose here. You know, this is basically giving your divine shield um, on a minion so you can keep it for a little bit longer to do fun stuff. Acolyte of Pain. Card draw. We want card draw sometimes. Muscle Atron. Give all minions in your hand plus one plus one and then if you forge it of course it's plus two plus two i absolutely try to keep this in my deck i mean in my opening hand all the time it's just silly not to you can play this turn two turn three is this yes you're getting hit a little bit but you'll be okay i promise you'll be okay outfit taylor give a friendly minion attack and health equal to this minions leave this in your hand buff it like crazy and then when you have something on board that your opponent was not able to clear off the board they'll be able to use this and you could do some fun stuff smacking them uh painter's virtue this is the weapon you want it's lifesteal lifesteal is good this is why you don't need to worry about getting hit a few times let yourself get punched a few times okay after your hero attacks give minions in your hand plus one plus one that works well plus giving it the one durability so you could do this again um and listen the uh restaurant viper the one that kills your weapon is not super super hyper prevalent in the game right now so it's not likely to be lost but you have two of them so remember that tiger's plushy miniature eyes rush lifesteal divine shield this is a good deck I'm, I'm looking at every single card i'm like this is a good card this is a good card for this deck this is a good card these are good leroy jenkins get crazy with this leave it in your hand and then this could be the otk 100 that this could be the otk or if you need to kill something crazy just leave it in your hand it's got charge it could hit the face or it could hit the opponent's minions warsaw grunt we know what this does this is you know rush after this attacks and kills a minion it may attack again so make this as heavy health and as heavy attack as humanly possible and then to round out this deck nomelia safe pilot rush also damages minions to whichever this attacks next to whoever this attacks so this is going to clear the you know a lot of things depending on how strong it is and then at the end when it's finally um gone deal two damage to all enemies so then you potentially have a secondary board clear after that this is an amazing deck again you can do so much with these decks you can do some nutty stuff there are a lot of potential for this deck to be going through um yeah you can make little tweaks here and there you could take out the give your weapon plus one durability and then turn it into the deputization or that's a very good option if you have this card you can take out the muscle atron and then you can put in the draw divine shield i personally wouldn't do this i like to having that extra plus one plus one or plus two plus two on these i wouldn't personally do it but you can do it it's still at a 50.6 percent win rate but again there's so much you could do with this deck it's very easy to play this deck it's very consistent right now in the win rate and this deck could after making some tweaks gets you much much further um once you hit that gold plateau of the rank ladder try this deck out please last up we do not talk a lot about rogue um you know rogue is in a weird place a little bit um usually the decks are very expensive multiple legendaries in it but when we do see something that's working and looks really fun to play um this one's at a 55.6 percent win rate you can't go wrong here for 3520 dust and look at this the similar decks you can make a lot of tech things out of this you can make some changes to this deck and be able to um, play this a lot longer. I think this one will go higher than what it is now in terms of, um, you know, once you hit the gold plateau, 
it, it'll move up a little bit and get you some more wins. This is Miracle Rogue. And one of the things that we want to do with this is we want to work on getting that Playhouse Giant out as for as cheaply as possible. That's one of the things that we're going to do. There's a bunch of mechs in here. Celestial Projectionist was just nerfed, I believe. Um, so I don't think it's a bad card right now, but it has been changed. So this deck might not be crazy right now. It might be something that, you know, goes down on the, uh, the play rates a little bit, but I don't think it's a bad deck whatsoever. Backstab. We know what backstab deb does. Deal two damage to an undamaged minion. Preparation. We know what this one does and we know what shadow step does. One of the things I'd like to mention is Break Dance. Return a friendly minion to your hand, summon a dancer with its stats, and rush. What are you going to work on? You're going to work on hitting this out with Playhouse Giant. It's just an inevitability that it's a good idea, especially when this is going to be much less than 20 mana, I promise. Uh, dig for treasure. Draw a minion. If it's a pirate, get a coin. You'll be able to do that. Gear shift. Shuffle the two leftmost cards in your hand, and then draw three cards. Fan of Knives, draw a card. So you see all these cards draw here. You see this. Everything that you're seeing here. Get the three 1-1 one, one magnetic spark bots with random bonus effects. You want this for multiple reasons. One of them is you can hook it to the Playhouse Giant. Do even more fun stuff with it. Okay. Uh, next up, Pit Stop. Discover a mech from your deck. Give it plus two, plus one. So you know what mech we're going to be looking for. Yes, you know what mech we're going to be looking for. Quick pick. After your hero attacks, draw a card. You're going to do a lot of card draw. It's getting those out. Okay, Celestial Projectionist. Choose a friendly minion. Add a temporary copy of it to your hand so you can go ahead and throw out another Playhouse Giant and do massive stuff with this. Dubious Purchase. Draw three cards and then destroy a random enemy minion. On the combo, you're going to want to do the combo. Gaslight Gatekeeper. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw that many cards. You're going to do card draw. Card draw, card draw. It's pretty cool. Everything must go. Summon two random four-cost minions, cost one less for each card you've drawn this turn. So this one, you'll be able to, you know, get out a lot, lot cheaper. Um, you'll be able to do some fun stuff with this as well. And then summon two minions on the board that your opponent has to deal with. So I'm probably simplifying this deck a little bit. There is trial and error here. Um, this is not just a pick up and go. Unholy Death Knight is a little bit of a pick-up-and-go deck. Um, Hand Buff Paladin is a, a really pick-up-and-go. Uh, you can't do any wrong with this one. Miracle, this one takes some finesse. But Rogue has always needed um, to, to have some finesse. I don't think Rogue has ever really had a class. Maybe it's just me not playing Rogue as potential as, you know, some other players in the, in the space. Um, but you need some finesse. You're not just playing, okay, time for this card, time for this card, time for this card. You're watching out what's happening. You're looking for those crazy combos to be able to do some crazy busted things, you know, but you just want to go ahead and do whatever you can to get out as many Playhouse Giants as possible, as strong as they are, as cheap as they are, and then defeat your opponent that way through attrition, okay? What we're going to do now is I want to just talk for a couple of minutes. I pulled all of the uh, Whizbangs Workshop cards um, because, you know, the next set is coming out in a couple of weeks and just see how the smallest or the lowest played cards are going. And I just wanted to bring this up right here. And this is not even 100% um, perfect. I think some of this, yes, I pulled it all together. So look at how many cards there are. And I just want to show you this. Look at this. And this is every single card. First of all, it's sad that uh, Whizbang got next to no play. It sucks. Um, remember, this is not full um, play rates um, of every single game, but this is just whatever um, Hearth um, HS Replay is tracking. Uh, Whizbang is just not doing good. Um, purifying Power, Chalk Artist. I'm seeing some of these. Let me go to the next one. Um, the next legendary here. Pipsy's not that great. Um, Colafiero, that was the free one. That one's not great as well. Uh, Nemzi's not doing good. CCG's not doing that good. Um, it's interesting to see, and then it's also not shocking whatsoever to see that 52.2% um, is Zilliax. Uh, it's just busted. Tigress this is the next one up, and then Scarab Keychain. This is a good card. Same thing with Safety Goggles. Um, I just picked all classes. I didn't go just neutrals only because I wanted to look at it. But it's interesting to see 
Um, Zilliac stocks is still high. I think Zilliac is going to absolutely be played in the next expansion and as many expansions going forward until it's, you know, put into wild and it's no longer standard. It was just interesting to see that way. That's it. That's all I'm going to say this week. If you would like to get a bundle without having to pay for it, don't forget the giveaway, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will see you in the next video.